Okay, I got some questions the other day about how I made text curve to the page on my Bible card. I'm going to run through the process real quick of making this file. So um, let's go ahead and dive into vCarve real quick. I make my Bibles with cherry. I got a source for some 2 inch thick cherry, 16 inches wide. So we're going to make this 16 inches by 11 inches. I'll be carving off the entire top of this material so we're going to zero to the spoil board. Open the clip art tab in Vectric V Carve and we'll go down to objects and people. And scroll down about three quarters of the way and we'll find the we'll find the open book model. We're just going to move it down to the lower left hand corner and stretch it up. And then I'm going to pull it up to fill in this material a little bit. Give us a little extra room for some more text. Go over and make sure we're centered to the material. Then I'll start making some different layers. First layer will be the book itself. I'll make another layer for the text. We're going to make another layer for some guidelines. Then I'll make another layer for, some, for an alignment line. The alignment line is what's going to curve our text. With the alignment layer clicked on, I'm going to come down here and we're just going to start drawing out a curve. You don't want to start in the crease of the Bible and you do not want to go all the way to the left hand edge. Come in just a little bit. Hit the escape key to get out of that. Click on the vector you just drew and we'll open, we'll hit N to go into the node editing. And we'll just pull these flags down a little bit, get that curve where we need it to be. This doesn't have to be perfect by no means. As long as we get a good curve that kind of follows the page, we'll be okay. One thing we do need to know is the green node there needs to be on the left hand side. That is our start point. So let's move our start point all the way to the left or it will turn our text backwards. So I'm just going to hover over this node and hit the P to make that the start point. Just tap P on the keyboard. With that one created, let's go on and draw one at the bottom. Hit escape to get out of the curve tool. Click on the vector. Hit N to edit the nodes. And again, you don't have to be perfect on these. We can edit these nodes and change that around later. 
a little bit more if we need to. I've got some text in a notepad document already typed out, so we're just going to copy that and paste this in to the text layer in our V-curve document. Click on the text tool and let's just paste our document in here. I'm uh, doing Psalms 23 this time. We're going to align this text to the left and make the text a little bit smaller to start with. Not that small. A little bit smaller. Eight might still be a little, eight's still a little bit too big. get it set here real because I don't have the title Psalms 23 in there either so I need to make it a little bit smaller roll on back to a, I think we might go down to a 7 yeah that might be good we're going to turn the book off real quick just so we can see our vectors better and we'll go ahead and insert the title Psalms 23 we have a distort tool over here we'll click on the distort selected objects tool We'll make sure we select the between two curves radio button. We'll select all of our text first. Then we will select the bottom vector. Then holding shift, we will select the top vector. I think the order of that is important. Then we'll click apply and that's what distorts our text. And you can see it's pull the text down to the page, just turn the book back on so we see how it lays across the page and it does follow the curves. We still see a couple problems here that we can fix real easy. First thing is a little too close to the bottom edge of the page, a little too, too close to the top edge of the page. So I'll control Z to undo the distortion tool. I'll move the bottom vector up just a little bit I move the top vector down just a little bit. We'll select the text again and hit the store. Now that looks a lot better, but we still got another problem we need to fix. The text doesn't line up with the left side of the page very well, so I will go back in here and we'll make another vector just to outline the edge of the page. After I get that line drawn, I'm going to click our distort tool again. And with the text selected, I will click the edit envelope radio button. It will allow me to adjust the vectors and that will pull the text where we need it to be. I'm going to move that bottom corner in just a little bit, move that top corner out just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and click the bake button. When we click the bake button, this is no longer text. These are individual vectors. So to get it to line up on the left side of the page better, we'll select everything manually and drag it over. Zoom in, hit the shift, and select all the letters that you missed. We can continue dragging this out by hand as we go down the page.
And the roughing pass, if you're going to cut the book completely out, you will want the selected vector. We want the machining limit boundaries to go to the selected vector. So we'll click that radio button, we'll select the vector, and calculate. This will give us our roughing pass. And you can see how deep that is. That's a lot of wasted wood right there, a lot of wasted material. So let's go back and make some adjustments there. We'll make this Bible a good bit thicker by increasing by increasing the shape height. And we're using two inch material on this in this case. So we'll move this all the way up to two inches. We'll go back and recalculate the roughing pass. And you can see that uses more of the material and it looks a lot better. If you want to cut the Bible out, this would be a good option. And you can see the Bible is a lot thicker right there. It's using more of that material. So once you do our roughing pass, we'll do our finishing pass. Then we'll grab our text and we'll do a V carve in the text. We need to make sure we have the checkbox project toolpath onto 3D model. Make sure that's checked. We'll calculate it. And then you'll be able to see how the text follows the page. But on this two inch material, I like to leave a bottom base on the Bible. I think it looks better to me anyway. So back in the modeling tab, I want to add a plane component. And I'm going to double click on the zero plane. So we can edit the properties. And on this plane, I'm going to come up about three quarter, that's half inch. Let's see. I'm just playing this by eye right now. See what looks good. I think a half inch looks good, so we're going to hit OK. We'll go back into our 3D roughing and we'll recalculate. This time we're not using the vector. We need to go to the material boundary. Recalculate. preview that tool path. I think it looks pretty good. We'll run our finishing tool path, same as before.
we'll grab our text redo the V carve in the text I like to use a laser for the text sometimes. When I use the diode laser for the text, I don't have to do a paint fill because the diode laser makes a nice dark mark into the cherry wood. With the border of the model, the text, the alignment, and the guides selected, I'm just turning the Bible off, um, export that to an SVG. I can open that SVG in Lightburn, get that centered up. I'll take all of those guidelines and I'll make them a toolpath. And then we can make any modifications to the text if we see. We can still move all the text around. Then I'll use that toolpath, of course, to outline the Bible to make sure we get it placed properly on the laser bed. And that's how I laser engrave the text onto my 3D models. I hope you found this video entertaining, if nothing else. As a few people have been asking me about how to do this. Here's how you make the 3D models in V-Carve, make the toolpath, then make the laser engrave off of that same toolpath. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.